Thank you very much uh, for the nice introduction. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, uh, I have the ho honor of presenting the results of the thesis of Magdalena Bernd Wippermann, who couldn't come because he's a, a young baby. So, uh, in preventing nociception, uh, commonly used anesthesia regimes and calves are xalazine, ketamine, and isoflurane, but that may be insufficient. And among approved NSIDs, only metamizole, also known under the name of dipyron, has a label for preemptive analgesia, at least in Europe. Some years ago, uh, it has been a little bit uh, restricted because of studies uh, uh, that metamizole can lead to uh, an agranulocytosis, and this was the reason for it was restricted by the FDA in, the, in America. But no information in the current literature about the effectiveness of metamizole in calves undergoing surgery. And uh, the reason for was that uh, metamizole can part participate in a multimodal uh, pain management because each of the uh, not steroidal anest uh, anest <laughs> analgesics uh, are acting a little bit different at different sites in the body. So uh, metamizole uh, is concerned to have an opioid-like uh, effect, at least in other animals. And our objectives were to examine if additional application of metamizole prior to umbilical surgery has effects on cortisol release, curse of heart rate, curse of arterial blood pressure, as possible signs of reduction of nociception. And perhaps that one uh, fr from us who followed the session before, they will remember. It's part of the same session, uh, session than uh, the, the study about substance P from Theresa Chona. So again, material and met methods. We have 26 calves aged four weeks to three months. And they all have been bite uh, on, on a normal market because they have uncomplicated umbilical hernia, but otherwise were clinically normal. So no complications at the site. Our surgery consisted in extirpation of the navel, and we used as a standard medication meloxicam at a reason of 0.5 milligram per kilogram intravenously, xylazine. 0.2 milligram per kilogram intramuscularly, ketamine, 2 milligram per kilogram intravenously, and isoflurane at an uh, end tidal concentration of 1.4% by me mechanical ventilation by positive pressure ventilation. This was a double-blinded study. That means that all persons uh, which participated uh, didn't know to which group belonged the animals, and the animals were randomly allocated by lottery to one of two groups. 13 calves received metamizole at 40 milligram per kilogram intravenously. This is a metamizole group, and 13 other calves a placebo, and this was an equal volume of sterile uh, natrium chloride, 0.9% intravenously, and this is our control group. And surgeons, anesthetists, and observer were blinded to allocation. So for this uh, experiment, we tried to standardize uh, our schedule, and each time point was referred to the, the moment of skin incision. So this was planned, uh, so uh, the blood samples were taken uh, 60 minutes before skin incision and then 5 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 150 minutes, and 510 minutes after skin incision. The meloxicam was given uh, about two hours and a half before skin incision. And the meloxicam, uh, the metamizole or the saline was given exactly 60 minutes before skin incision. Additionally, xalazine for induction of anesthesia was given 50 minutes before skin incision. And 30 minutes before skin incision, we started uh, the anesthesia by giving uh, the ketamine intravenously. Then 
After incubation, uh, we started uh, our inhalational anesthesia by giving iso isoflurane. And now, uh, we, our idea was to define certain time points of action where uh, noxious, noxious stimuli can happen. And this list uh, was before surgical intervention, the positioning of the closed clamps, the positioning of the navel clamp, and all these time points relatively to the incision of the skin, then the preparation of the subcutaneous tissue, the incision of the peritoneum, ligation of the navel vein, manipulations of the guts, suture of the peritoneum and fascia, suture of the subcutaneous tissue, suture of the skin, and the end of surgery and the end of anesthesia. So our heart rate was measured by continuous measurements by a pulse watch on a chest strap. This is originally constructed for equine analysis, but it comes from uh, the Society Polar, which is well known on for uh, watches for sports uh, too. The mean arterial blood pressure was measured by an art arterial catheter introduced into the arteria digitalis palmaris communis and uh, was uh, relied to a transducer system and the MX960P1 medix. Observ observations on, of reactions to noxious stimuli were done by three persons, the sur surgeon, the assistant, and an additional person. And the plasma concentration of cortisol, PCC in our study, was determined by electro in an Alexis system by Roche. For statistical analysis, multiple linear models, linear mixed models, and Fisher's XX test were used. So, first coming to the results of plasma cortisol concentration. Uh, as you can see in this experiment, the, the, the concentration of uh, cortisol was uh, st statistically, st statistically not different in the, in, in the control group and in the study group before the beginning of the experiment. But during experiment in both groups, cortisol started to, to rise, and then after the end of surgery, redeclined. And as you can see, at all time points, without uh, at the beginning, the cortisol level was higher in the control group compared to the study group in our, uh, in our experiment, the group which received additionally metamizole. But if you, uh, if you are looking for statistical differences and you compare only groups, only at this time point, which is clearly at the end of surgery, there was a statistical difference between uh, the control group and the metamizole group. So there are other possibilities to, to see uh, and to, um, to analyze our results. Uh, the curse of PCC was uh, 11.9 nanomole per liter lower on average in the metamizole group than in the control group if you compare this over the whole experience. And the maximum of PCC was uh, in the control group with 59.3 nanomole per liter versus uh, 37.9 nanomole per liter in the metamizole group. Uh, uh, was in the control group was higher. But this was not statistically uh, significant. The p-value was 0 0.08. Now, let us have a look on the curse of uh, plasma cortisol in, the bo in both of groups. You can see that the maximum of uh, the cortisol values was not attained at the same moment. So 92.3% in group uh, MG uh, had their maximum intersurgery until 16 minutes after the skin incision, whereas in the control groups, 53.8 have at post-surgically. That means 2.5 hours after the skin incision. And this uh, difference was signif significant. So let's have a look on uh, the blood pressure. 
As you can see in both groups, blood pressure was rising from the beginning until the end of the surgery. And it was always a little bit uh, higher in the control group than in the metamisole group, but uh, there was no statistical uh, difference at any time point. Let's see us the heart rate and calvus repeat uh, in our experiment. And as you can see here, the same as the heart rate was a little bit higher in the metamisole group than in the control group this time but only at the moment of positioning of this clamp, we detected a significant difference, and I argue this is not clinically relevant. So none of the calves showed a reaction to anoxious stimuli at any time during the surgery. I'm coming to the conclusion. The additional pre-surgical use of metamisole that means daparone, results in significantly lower increase of plasma cortisol concentration in the course of an extirpation of the navel, a quicker decrease of the cortisol level after the end of the surgical procedure, and this can mean or can be due to the fact that after the surgical procedure, there is no effect of, on, of isoflurane, and uh, perhaps this was a long effect of metamisole, thus indicating a possible reduction in nociception and an improvement of analgetic management in conclusion. Thank you very much for your interest.